Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in today's video, I'm going to help you find some fish and exploit them using the Smart HUD for Poker Tracker 4, which you can see on the screen right here. It's a custom HUD that I built myself. Before we get to that, though, real quick, I want to offer you a free PDF called the Top 10 Poker HUD Stats Cheat Sheet. You can get it through the link in the description below or just type in smartpokerstudy.com slash top 10 HUD stats. Once you download this six page bad boy right here, page one gives you some information. Starting on page two are where the, the HUD stat information comes from. I give you the description. I tell you how to calculate it as well. I tell you how to exploit the various percentages and the, some additional information about each stat. In particular today, we're going to look at VPIP, VPIP, PFR, the gap between the two, as well as 3-bet preflop as well. But all of the rest of the stats are right down here. So once again, click that link in the description for some more information. So looking at the Smart HUD real quick, let me go over some key stats for you, the ones I just mentioned. Um, this is the note editor, the number of hands, VPIP, PFR, fold to steal are these two right here. We have raise first in, in the middle on the far left, and then the call two bet right here, as well as three bet preflop. And these are the fold to C bet stats down here as well. We'll hit all those again. You don't have to remember all that right now. I'll discuss them or I'll mention the names again as we're going through the video here. But here's the thing. Fish are your number one targets at the table. They're the weakest players. They're the ones that we want to play as many hands as possible against. Now, some tendencies of fish. Pre-flop, they just play way too many hands because they love seeing flops. Anything suited, anything connected, any big cards, they just cannot fold pre-flop because they see the magic in what they can hit, flop, turn, and river with those hands. Because a key thing about fish is they love making big hands. Post-flop, they're calling stations. They just can't fold any pair or any draw. Or sometimes you'll find some aggressive bluffers post-flop as well. When you flop top pair against a super aggressive player, strap in, hold on to your butts, click that call button, let them bluff chips into you. So. How do we find the fish besides these general tendencies that we might notice as we watch them play? With the HUD, we can spot VPIP greater than 30% and the higher the better. This is just the general cutoff. Through this video, you'll see some instances of fish with less than 30%, but I'll point that stuff out to you. Right over here, 67% VPIP, 42, 33, and 53. Potential fish right here. Let me show you why I think 30% is the starting level for fishy players. It's just the key number you want to first look for. A 30% range in Flopzilla Pro has all of this. All the best broadways, every ace, pocket pairs, and some suited connectors, some suited big cards as well. But if you start going beyond this, this player is playing 33%. Let's just type that in. 33% range. Ah, kind of changed a bit. Let's go to 42% here. If you go to 42, yeah, much wider. Even if we add one hand and take that away, we've got so many weaker suited hands as well as weaker off suit hands in that 42% range. What about this player, 53%? Holy cow, tons of weak hands there. What about 67%? Now, I know it's only six hands, but we're just thinking about that percentage because you will find players who over 100, 200, 500 hands, you will find them at 67% VPIP. Bam, look at that is it's probably actually we can probably remove some of this stuff and then put all suited hands in. We've got 66%. This is what this player plays if this HUD stat holds out in the long run. So like I said, the higher the better. 30% is that initial cutoff point. Now, what else, what else we look for is a huge VPIP and PFR gap. That means they're doing a lot of calling. Let's look at this player right here. 53 slash zero. That's a huge 53% gap right there. That means he's played 53% of the hands and has never raised while he's doing a ton of limping and calling preflop as evidenced by 0% raise first in, 0% three bet, but 42% calling two bets. Of course, there's limps as well. Let's take a look at this limping 76% of the time. Holy cow, mega fish right here. We definitely want to target this player. So you have passive fish, 53 slash zero. 
Passive means they're just not aggressive. They don't do a lot of bets and raises. They mostly do calls and checks, right? 53-0, 67-0 right here. Um, also some other examples, 30-5, 26-5. We also have some aggressive fish. That's where the gap between VPIP and PFR, it's generally less than PFR. 33-30 plays a ton of hands. That gap's only 3%. Yeah, more aggressive than passive. Raises first in 22, calls 13, has uh, shown the ability to three bet already. We've got an aggressive fish over here, which you might sometimes call a maniac or a donk. Right over here, 42-24, 18% gap, same percentage for raising first in and calling, and it has shown uh, the ability to three bet in the past. Yes, another uh, aggressive fish right here. So like I said, fish are your number one targets. It's your job to find them, tag them, and then isolate them. First, you want to find them. Gave you the clues right up here is uh, to, to who are the fish. First, look at VPIP, PFR, and 3-bet. When you find the fish, note them in your mind right away. Also look for call 2-bet greater than raise first in. We have that right here. We have that right here. We actually have it almost here. They basically equal the same percentage. As soon as you find the fish, you want to color code the fish's HUD panel. I use the green color. So in the note editor, pop it open, select green. And we want to do this for every one of our fish. And it just makes it so the, the fishiness of them stands out. We don't even really have to look at the stats. We just see that green color. We know automatically that they're a target at the table. And it's our job to get into hands against them. The other thing... Um, if it's available, you can color code the player box or use a symbol. Like on America's Card Room, for example, I can color this box green and I can give them a little fish symbol as well to help it stand out a little bit more. The reason why you want to make that stand out is so that you know who to isolate. That's a key thing. When you find the fish, step one, step two is isolating them. You want that fish all to yourself as you're playing. So, the three ways to isolate players. First off, you want to open raise in their blinds. And let's look at this hand. Fold, fold. We open raise. We've got three fish on our left. Loving this. I don't care who I isolate. I want all of them to the pot or uh, uh, to the flop heads up against me. Couple of folds. Great. We're going to be in position, jack nine suited against what looks like a loose aggressive fish right here. But hey, he folds to see bet 67% of the time on the flop. Loving that stat. He ends up calling. Now, we do just have a jack-9 suited, but we have so many things going for us, like I just mentioned. Uh, namely, position, folds a lot, uh, and he's just a fish in general. Jack, um, king, jack-5, second pair, weak kicker. You know, he folds a ton uh, uh, on the flop, and I would love for him to call with, with a weaker hand, but at the same time, I don't want to check behind and let him catch a free diamond, a free ace if he has queen 10, a free queen if he has 10-9. There's so many possible draws here for him defending out of the big blind. I'd rather bet if he calls with something weaker, great, I'm getting some value. I can maybe check back the turn. But if he folds out any decent draws, I'm at least uh, realizing my equity, as they say. And he folded right here. Not a bad result, even though I had second pair against a fish. Uh, I don't mind at all taking this down right now. Now, the next way to isolate the fish is to ISO raise when they limp in. Got a fish. Oh, before we see the action, you can see I've already color-coded the fish at this table. These two in particular. These guys are looking tight aggressive. I'm tight aggressive at a 15-15. And we've got an unknown player over here. So, first one, the fish. Color-coded him green. Calling is more than raising first in. 20% gap is greater than PFR. Like we have a fish plus the fact that he limped under the gun. Yeah, we've got a fish right here, right? So we come over the top with an ISO raise. Now I'm making it seven big blinds because two things. When you're ISO raising, one of the weakest players at the table, number one is you want to do the best job you can to get them heads up. Making it seven big blinds makes it very easy for these players to fold, giving me a weak, big stacked player all to myself in position on the flop, if, if he chooses to call. They all fold, and he calls. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. He doesn't call. The other reason to ISO raise so big is that you're getting maximum value out of his potentially weaker calling range. 
A lot of fish love to limp call with very weak hands, and especially than aces. If he calls with anything right here, I'm just crushing him. I am getting so much theoretical value. You know, he could call with king jack, and the flop comes king jack three, and I'm going to lose, right? That's always possible. But right now, 85% equity versus his potential range of hands, according to Poker Tracker 4. I'm loving this. But the fact that he shoved, even better, right? Fish are going to limp shove with pocket aces and pocket kings, but they'll also do it with queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, sevens, sixes, fives, fours, threes, and even deuces I've seen before. I've seen ace, king, ace, queen shove as well. Anything susceptible that he just wants to end the hand now, he might put me on, I don't know, pocket jacks, pocket queens, a hand that maybe he thinks I can fold, or maybe I have ace, king, and I can fold right now too. Whatever, whatever is going through his mind, I'm not exactly sure, but I guarantee it's weaker than aces, and that's one of the reasons why you make it so big. Make them fight back against you. And he had the pocket tens. Loving that result right there. So the last uh, way to isolate your fish is to three bet their open raises. So before we see that, we've got um, a fish, a fish, another fish, and another fish. And you can see all of them right here. Um, uh, calling is greater than raising first in. That gap is really big. And here are two instances of players who VPIP less than 30, but because that gap is so big and they're calling so much more than raising and not three betting him, but he has three bet once, but so many more calls, they're absolute fish right here. So uh, limp. And then an ISO raise. This isn't an open raise. So whether you three bet their opens or three bet their ISO raises, you're basically making a three bet against the fish. So I don't have a hand as strong as the pocket aces, but this is definitely a spot that's worthy of uh, isolating the fish all to myself. For one thing, we've got a super loose passive fish. Maybe he'll call my ISO raise to 10 big blinds. Now I've got a fish who folds on the flop 100% all to myself, and maybe he can fold. But the other thing here is I recognize right away the weakness in this bet. First off, he's a fish by his stats. That bet screams weakness. Maybe he can do this with pocket aces and kings to try to get somebody to three bet. But most likely, when fish make a weak bet, it's because they have a weak hand. I'm just trying right now to pounce on his weakness. We get all folds right here, and then villain42 decides to call. Not the end of the world. I wanted him to fold, but I got king-queen suited. I'm in position against a fish. Loving this spot right now. A check. Hard to hit. Relatively dry board. And I check behind. I really dislike that check behind. I should have bluff c-bet him right here. The eight comes giving me a flush draw. Check. Now that I hit the flush draw, and I do have a little bit of showdown value. Maybe he called with king-jack or queen-ten preflop. I am ahead of that stuff. I'm totally fine with just checking, getting that free river, hopefully hitting a king, a queen, or even better, a diamond. But we get the queen. Nice, top pair, decent kicker, right? Um, check, and then we bet five big blinds, and he made some kind of a crying call right here, and we beat him. Now, because it's ACR, uh, he folded, mucked his hand. We're never going to know what he had. But suffice it to say, it was definitely worse than a king. It might have been just a six. It might have even been just an ace high hand right here. I imagine because we checked flop turn river, if he had a king on this river, um, king 10, king 9, he probably would have bet for a value. He doesn't want me to check behind when he suddenly rivered a top bear hand. So I knew I was ahead, but I bet a small amount to get a crying call, like I said. And whether it was, I don't know, Ace six on the flop, um, eight to nine on the turn. I got some value out of him right there. All righty. So take action. What I want you to do over this next week or at a minimum, your next session, utilize your HUD. Hopefully you have the smart HUD already. Find the fish, tag them and isolate them. It is your job to put yourself into as many heads up spots against the fish as possible. Bet big enough like you saw me do to get everyone else to fold so you have them all to yourself. And then once you get there to that flop, turn, and river, exploit them with whatever you need to do. Value betting, bluff betting. Situation is up to you based on the range and the board. Alrighty, lastly, get the Smart HUD for Poker Tracker 4. Three versions of the HUD, a cash game version like you see here, a six max tournament version, and a full ring tournament 
tournament version. They all have seven custom pops up pop-ups as well. And it comes with a 75 minute webinar to help you learn every aspect of the smart HUD.